Today we're going to be looking at a dice box mold from Let's Resin that's designed to make a dice box that looks like a dagger or a sword. This has the potential to make some really cool D&D character dice boxes and so I thought I'd give it a try. This dice mold already has a few things going for it that I love. First of all, it's got these cross guards on the bottom of it that keep the mold in its place. I absolutely love that it makes it way more rigid than normal dice box molds are. The mold itself also says how many ounces of resin you need to fill it up, which is one of the most common complaints I have, so it's winning huge points for me already. It is a bit too large to fit in a normal pressure pot, however, you gotta have one of the larger pressure pots like I do if you want to use a pressure pot for this mold, but you don't have to. There was also a Reddit post by Garoofer who made a dagger dice box that has expanded to be a huge thing, so I think this is at least inspired by that, but it's different enough that I wouldn't call it straight copying. We're gonna do some cold casting as well as resin pouring for this mold, so for the handle I'm gonna put a copper color. The blade itself will be silver and black, and then the guard and pommel will be gold. I'm going to use a brush right on the handle for the bronze color, and then again gold on the pommel and the guard of the blade. So I just dip my brush down into some of the mica powders and begin wiping it on. This silicone mold, as most are, is super staticky, and so it pulls a lot of the mica powder off and away from where I want it to go, and so I'm not going to get that clean of lines. That doesn't bother me, but it may bother you, but that's just how most silicone molds work. Now we can add the gold mica powder again to the pommel and the the guard of the mold. This is a good rule in general, but as you can see with how much mica powder is just floating in the air, it's a really good idea to wear a dust mask whenever you're working with this stuff, either cold casting or even just mixing it with resin. It still kind of finds its way up into the air. But with the molds prepped, it's time to actually start making the resin that will go inside of them. I'm going to use Envirotex light resin. It's a one-to-one -one by volume mixture resin, and it comes out super clear. I mix it up in one large cup for about five minutes or until my arms are tired because that's about how I know five minutes has passed, and then there are no streaks and it's crystal clear. I add my silver mica powder, which is going to be the baseline color here. I'm trying to mimic a Damascus style blade where there's some other colors running through the silver, and so I'm having silver with a black dirty pour, which is where you just take some black alcohol ink, put it on the top of the resin, and let it sit there for just a moment before pouring it. This will create a layered look that pretty much ideally mimics Damascus, so this works out perfectly for this type of dagger build. Anytime you think there needs to be more layers and you're just pouring straight silver, no problem, just add some more alcohol ink. Pro tip, it's a really good idea to place your molds where they're gonna go, for instance on your pressure pot insert. I definitely thought of that ahead of time, because whenever you pick them up and move them around, there's a chance that the resin could spill out of the edges, so if you have something flat that you can keep them on, that's a great idea. I start pouring the resin in the other half of the mold and it was pretty much right. I think I think I ended up having to use around 8 ounces of resin, but that's because I probably overfilled. I generally don't like the raised edges that underfilling causes. You can always pop the surface bubbles with a lighter. I generally do this whether I put it in the pressure pot or not, but because mine's not clear, I probably could have just not used a pressure pot for this build. But I have one, and so I'm going to. After 48 hours in the pressure pot, the dagger dice box molds were ready to go. You can see some of the resin came off the edges, but that was just because I'm dumb and moved them poorly, so you'll do better than I did. These boxes came out fantastic looking. I was super happy with how that cold cast turned out on the handle as well as the guard and pommel. The copper kind of looks like leather, which is what I was going for, but the blade itself is something to marvel at. It really truly does look like Damascus steel. It's a pretty nice size. You can actually hold it by the handle in your hand, and the other half of the mold looks great. I was wondering how they were going to fit together, but they honestly just kind of lock in nicely. Because I had that overflowing resin, I cut off the excess with my exacto knife, but then when I was done, you could hardly tell I did anything to it. It looks like a fantastic dice box mold, and I was ready to put some actual dice in it. But remember, looks aren't everything. Looks can be deceiving, or whatever cliche you want to throw at it, but we'll get back to that in a moment. I put some regular Chessex size dice in there, some ones that I got from Easy Roller and D&D Wow. They fit perfectly in. They're normal Chessex size dice. They go into the slots with no real issues at all. But any handmade dice was a completely different story. I have a few different styles here, like my regular size dice, like these lemonade dice, just flat won't fit in there. I made mine about 15% larger than a normal D20, and so it's just not going to fit inside that mold. But that's not unique to me. I would say that a good majority of handmade dice makers make theirs just a little bit bigger. 
Not only that, the kind of sharp edges can cause problems. These shell dice that I made in Bob Ross's style barely fit into there, and they are huge. The D20 has no chance of getting into the D20 hole. But these regular handmade sharp edge dice from Dicebound, which are about the size of most handmade dice makers, won't fit in there either. Not just the D20, the D6 barely fits, the D8 won't, and none of the others will. So if you are a handmade dice maker and looking to put handmade dice in a box like this, I do caution against it, though if you're just picking up some dice and throwing them in the dice box, you're probably going to be satisfied. I do say probably, however, because this D10 or D100, depending on who you ask, got stuck in there. Don't know why, I did not force it in there, I just closed the dice box on it and it really got stuck in there. I had to find a piece of metal that was thin enough to help me pry it out, but then it didn't get stuck again. Don't really know why that happened, but if it happened to me accidentally, it might happen to you. Either way, I think the design of the mold is fantastic. I love that it shows you how many ounces it takes to actually fill up the mold. That's something that I've always asked for. And I love how rigid the mold is, so it's super forgiving for both beginners and intellect avoidant people like me who often mess up. One thing that was asked jokingly in the comments of my chessboard mold video was how does it sound rolling on the table, because I do that with dice. But you know what? I'm always a people pleaser. <laughs> So that's how it sounds. Of course, I'll put a link in the description below for anybody who wants to purchase one of these for themselves on Amazon. That way you can try it out. Consider subscribing if you might want to see some more videos like this in the future. Comment down below any other molds you might want me to try out. Like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you disliked it. I want to hear that too. Either way, I hope that you have a fantastic day.